This is how you can test and see if your NPN transistors are working or not. I know when I'm experimenting I tend to blow up a lot of them so it's nice to go through them quickly and see if they're working. So it's just a breadboard. There's a 10 volt supply, positive on the top rail, negative on the lower rail. We're going to use an LED if you ever want to know how to hook them up. If you look inside there's always one one sort of end that's larger than the other. It's the right side on this one and that's the ground. So we'll throw that to the right. Whenever we're using an LED we want to hook it up in series with a resistor because diodes have a set voltage when they're forward biased it'll suck up two volts so whatever is left of the power source will go through the resistor. This is a 470 ohm resistor in this case because it's a 10 volt supply. I don't want that much current to be flowing but you would use whatever you need depending on your, your voltage supply. We're going to use a transistor. This is an NPN transistor here. I'm using the rounded side toward me so I'm looking at the dot which means that I know this is out of focus. There we go. I know that the far left leg this is the collector, the middle is the base, and the right side is the emitter. So I'll put that into the board. And the way it's working so far is that we'll have positive voltage coming off the positive rail. So that power will be flowing through the wire. Focus. Through the wire, through the resistor through the LED and into the transistor. And of course the transistor is going to act like a switch and it will only be open from the collector to the emitter whenever we have the voltage forward biased or we have current flowing from the base into the emitter. So to satisfy that, the emitter side of the transistor, the far right, will go to ground, which is our lower rail. So the circuit's complete now, all we need is the actual trigger circuit on the base leg of the transistor. So what I do, to make things nice and easy, instead of using a resistor, I just use my body. It's depending on kind of how hard I'm holding the lead. The resistance through my body is anywhere from a few thousand ohms to a couple million ohms. So I'm going from the positive rail into the base of the transistor. So this is the signal circuit. And if I grab hold of these, nothing happens. So we sit here and wonder to ourselves, why? Why isn't anything happening? Interesting. So, if we look now, it turns out both of those transistors are pooched. And you can see as I squeeze these, the harder I squeeze, the lower the resistance through the base circuit. And the current that's flowing through my body from hand to hand is forward biasing that base emitter leg inside the transistor and allowing current to flow from the collector to the emitter through the LED. So I'll set this up and as I'm going I'll just pop out the transistor, put that in the good pile, pop in a new one. I can see that that one is not working. Put that in the bad pile, pop in another one. And that one is working after all. I don't know what was going on before. But that's pretty much it. So I'll go through, grab my, you know, little baggie of transistors, whatever I'm using, and make sure that they're all working. And the ones that are bad, which I think was this one. 
don't light out that LED. It's also not a bad idea if you take them and put them in backwards. So in this case, they'll have the flat side toward you. You can check to see how much current is leaking back and forth, or sorry, backward from the base to the collector. Because it's not doped as highly on that side, or as low, I can't remember which way it is, but it's not, not as sensitive to, to opening as it is from the base to the emitter. So you shouldn't have it lighting up when it goes in backwards. Alternatively, if you don't trust your circuit or you just want to make sure you're using a good transistor, you can take your multimeter, put it on the resistance setting and go to the diode diode check. And what this does is forward biases whatever circuit you're dealing with and it'll tell you how much voltage it takes to forward bias that PN or NP junction. So if you look at this I'm going from, I know it's hard to see, they're small and this is really finicky to do, but I'm going from the base to the emitter. It's 0.61 volts, which is pretty standard for a silicon diode. And from the base to the emitter, it's the same thing, 0.61 volts. So that's good. If I go either from the emitter to the collector or from the collector to the emitter, you should have nothing at all. And that's because that circuit is closed until you bias the base to the emitter. I mean, all these things really are, it's just two diodes installed back to back, right? They're essentially symmetrical. With an NPN, you have your N-doped P and then N again, which is why it's called NPN, obviously. But the, the difference inside is there's a lot more sensitivity from the base to the emitter than there is from the base to the collector. So these things, they will work both ways, but they're only designed to work one way, which is why when I have it hooked up correctly, and this is actually pointing at you, that's why the tiny, tiny amount of current that's flowing through my body is able to activate it. But if I were to flip it around, you might see a little bit of this LED lighting up if you look really carefully you have to kind of strain yourself to see it but it is lighting up a tiny little bit when I squeeze these leads but it's really nothing compared to the actual correct direction where the amplification is considerably higher as a final note you may not have realized this but I mean I was obviously using my body is the resistor in this case, and we do conduct quite quite readily. These are the, the probes here. And if I kind of put my fingers on lightly, it'll um it'll measure. So here I'm pushing kind of firmly, it's showing six six million ohms goes to open. If I push down really hard, it'll show 1.5 million ohms. So if we do a real quick calculation here with Ohm's law, I know I had a 10 volt circuit. The current is equal to V divided by R. 1500000. So we are pushing, you know, very, very little current through my body, like less than considerably less than a milliamp and it was amplifying that about you know one two or three hundred times which is the beauty of a transistor you need a very small signal current to induce a large current through it I'm sure after I post this on on YouTube I'll get at least a couple comments people telling me how bad an idea it is to use your body to complete a circuit, and it is. It's a bad idea, but I mean, you should know a little bit about electronics before you really start playing with any of this stuff. Never plug yourself into a wall, but you have to realize that there's so, so little current flowing through me when I'm doing this that it's really, it's really not a problem, and you'll be just fine if you 
stay smart. So that's how you test your, your NPN diodes. They're very, very convenient little pieces of technology, which is why there are so many trillions of them on this planet, but they only work when they're not broken inside. And unfortunately, it's really, really easy to fry these without any sort of signal as to whether or not it's broken. They don't release a nice healthy puff of smoke or anything like resistors typically do. They just sort of stop working if you hook it up wrong. That's all.